series of chunky textured pillow covers that coordinate with the chunky textured three color modern stripes <laughs> blanket. That's a mouthful. All right, we're going to use a 10 millimeter crochet hook. This is Burnett Softy Chunky Super Bulky Six Weight Yarn. Use whatever bulky yarn you'd like. You'll need two darning needles, one with a smaller hole to be able to get through the buttons and one with the bigger eye uh, to be able to make it easier for yourself when you're uh, weaving the ends in. You'll need some sharp scissors, uh, measuring tape. We'll need to know when we get to about 42 inches. And three one inch buttons. I'm using the same buttons on all three. I believe I am. I might change to a darker button for pillow cover number two. I haven't decided. All right, so get your slip stitch, slip knot rather, and chain 37, just like all of the others. You'll end up with somewhere around 18 inches. And even though that's going to seem small for your 20 inch pillow form, it's actually just perfect. I'll come right back when I have 37 chains. All right, I have 37 chains. We're gonna be working with half double crochet and slip stitch. One row of each as we go across. So I made this pattern particularly easy because you're working with black yarn or I am. You can use whatever color you want, but this goes with the blanket. Uh, black yarn is a little hard for me to see. I have to have a lot of light. It's easier with the chunky yarn than um, with the smaller weight yarn. Uh, also, I chose this pattern because it's a pretty, t fairly tight weave um, so that the pillow form doesn't show through. All right, we're going to come in to the second chain from the hook, not that, one, two, turn it over. You know I like going in the, the back bump, right there. Already did a yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, pull through all three, there's your regular old half double crochet. All right, and we're going to do that all the way down the row. If you get confused, turn it over, find your next chain, turn it over, find your back bump. There. And complete your half double crochet. Do that all the way down the row and I will come back when I've reached the end of my row. All right, I've reached the end of my row. I have 36 half double crochets in the back bump of each chain. This is going to be about 18 inches wide. It will fit a 20 inch pillow form. If you wanna make it smaller, just make fewer chains. It doesn't matter how many chains you have in this particular pattern. If you wanna make it bigger, make more chains. This one will match up to be approximately the same size as the other two. All right, so chain one. That was row one, this is row two. It's gonna be a repeat of row twos, uh, rows two and three. You are just going to find your back bump. Right there, there's your front, or your back loop, sorry, back loop. And we're going to do slip stitch. Go in, come through, and just pull it right through. Keep these a little on the loose side so that you don't have any trouble going into the stitch on the return row. Back loop only. Slip stitch. Back loop only. 
slip stitch. Let's see if you can see that. Back loop only. Slip stitch. Back loop only. Slip stitch. You're going to do that all the way across. This will be row two of the pattern. When uh, I come to the end of the row, we'll do row three, and it will be a repeat of rows two and three throughout the rest of the pattern until it reaches 42 inches. I'll be right back. All right, in the very last stitch, whenever I'm doing a row and back loop only, the very last stitch, I like to go through the whole stitch. You don't have to, I just like to do that. Remember to keep your slip stitch kind of on the loose side. And chain one. The reason I like this pattern for the black is I can pretty much feel where I'm going. All right, so this is row three of your row, rows two and three repeat. It will be half double crochet, back loop only. Find that back loop of your slip stitch. And I hope you made them kind of loose. And come through with a half double crochet yarn over. Find your back loop only. Pull that through, yarn over, pull through all three loops to complete a half double crochet. Let's do that again. Yarn over. Find your back loop. Pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. It's just a regular half double crochet. I'm going to do a couple of more because I want you to see the pattern. Back loop only, half double crochet, back loop only, half double crochet. Now you know why I wanted you to keep your slip stitch on the loose side. Now, I don't know if you can see that very well. Let's see if I can get it in the light. It creates a chain, and you'll, you can either put your pillow when it's finished horizontally or vertically. Either way, it's going to look good. And you're, you're going to have this all the way throughout your pattern. And this will be the right side, and you know it's the right side because your initial tail from your first chain comes out on the left side. I'm going to do a few more rows just so you see what it looks like, but continue on with that pattern. The next row will be, you'll chain one, turn, slip stitch into the back loop only until you get to the last stitch, go through the full stitch, chain one, turn, half double crochet, back loop only for the whole row until you get to the last stitch and then go through the full stitch. Again, it won't matter if you go through the back stitch, but on the last stitch, but you do end up with a little bit of a gap or a little bit of a hole. It'll be covered up when you seam it together. So I'm going to do a few more rows and I'll meet you back. All right, just a quick note. If you're getting lost with the back, back loop only on the slip stitch, you really kind of need to turn it, and then you'll see. The back loop is way back here. Turn it, there's your back loop. And every time you do that, You're making another row like this with that little cable looking piece and it will go all the way that's going to be your pattern and they'll be about a finger's width apart so continue this pattern rows two and three until it reaches about 42 inches long, a little bit longer if you'd like, makes it easier for the buttonholes. 
I will meet you back here when I have reached around 42 inches long and we'll work on the buttonhole row and then sewing it up and putting the buttonholes on. All right, have fun. All right, I'm back. This is our pattern number three of our chunky textured pillow covers that coordinate with the blanket. I've reached, uh, I'm almost at 43 inches here in length. It did shrink up a little bit on me on the width, about 17 inches maybe, but don't worry, it's very stretchy. And when you seam it together, it was gonna work just fine. So I ended up on a half double crochet row, chain one, turn. This will be our buttonhole row. We're going to uh, work half double crochets again. And this time we're going to go in the whole stitch, right at that very first stitch. And we'll half double crochet into the first nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're going into that whole stitch, nine. Chain one, and just go right into the next stitch with half double crochet, the next nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, chain one. This has taken up most of the skein. I know I say skein, most people say skein, but I grew up saying skein, I'm not sure why. All right, we did, I'll make sure what we're doing here. We half double crocheted into nine, chain one, half double crochet into the next nine. I'm sure you're getting the picture here. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Chain one and continue. Half double crochet into the next nine. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We'll finish out our row. Chain one, cut your yarn, and fasten off. Just tighten that up. Oh, we'll weave that in later. Now in this pattern, there definitely is a right side and a wrong side. This is the wrong side. Although it's a still very nice pattern if you'd prefer to use that side, but we went to so much trouble to get this nice cable looking, these ridges. Let's use the right side. So find your beginning in case you need to know. I mean, we can tell just by looking that this is the right side, but you always know because the tail from your beginning chain is on the left. So we're gonna fold it right sides together. We're gonna be sewing it together and then turning it inside out later. 
wherever you want. It doesn't matter. You can go kind of in the middle, or if you'd rather bring it up closer to the top, you can do that. I'm going to go closer to the middle, but I'm not measuring it at all. Wherever your buttonhole row is, that's going to go under because when you turn it inside out, it'll be on the right side. You want to overlap. That's your beginning chain here. You want to overlap that by a couple of rows. Just make sure however many rows you overlapped on one side, you do the same on the other side. And you might might want to use a stitch marker, uh, a piece of yarn that's a different color, maybe a nice bright color that you can see. I'm not going to do that. All right, cut yourself. Let's see, I'm going to come in about two rows here. As long as you do the same thing on either side, you're fine. So, I usually like to do, just to be on the safe side, four lengths of the yarn that I'm going to sew in. So I had one, two, three. Come on, cooperate. Four. So I have four lengths of the sides that I'm going to be sewing. Get your darning needle, the one with the bigger eye. Whoop. Okay, come up to your corner. Just make sure you're going through both thicknesses. Just grab, grab stitches on either side. Tie a knot a couple of times here. You'll weave that in later. And just come on down the side with a whip stitch. It's just super simple. Just pick up some stitches on one side, pick up some stitches on the other side. Try to keep it somewhat even, however far you go in. I'm keeping it right at the edge. And this holds it very, very securely. It'll make it through many washings. That's why I like to use the buttons. It makes it removable and washable. I love black. I have a lot of black. I have kind of a modern farmhouse. But I don't like crocheting with black very much. It's a little hard on my eyes. But the chunky yarn is a bit easier. All right, so go all the way down with your whip stitch and do the same thing on the other side, making sure that your buttonhole edge, where is my buttonhole edge? Up oh, there it is, you can feel the buttonholes. That's going to be underneath. Then I'm going to come up two, two rows approximately. Just make sure you do the same thing on the other side. When you get to this part, just make sure you go through all those thicknesses. All of it. All right, I will meet you when we have both finished our side seams. 
I do want to mention that it's perfectly okay and even probably better if you kind of split through some of these stitches with your needle. It will just make it that much more secure. Okay, again, I just wanted to show you this is how much yarn I ended up with by giving myself four lengths. Oh, I'm down at this corner. I've already gone through once. I'm going to go through a second time. Pull my yarn through that loop. Cut it. I probably should have left a little bit longer than that. Leave yourself a longer tail than that. It will make it easier to weave it in. All right, do the same thing on the other side. In case you don't know how to weave in your ends, as I said, you should leave a much longer tail than I did. But just go in and out, kind of in a tunnel here. We're not going to be able to go very far with this tail. And come back, but go under that first one, and then just tunnel again. And you always want to go three times. Again, I'm going to come under that stitch. It doesn't really matter which way you go. You could go horizontally if you wanted to, and then come back up a row. Just make sure that whatever you do, you do it three times. Pull it kind of tight, but be super careful when you cut your yarn, because it would be very, very sad if you cut into your crochet stitches. Ask me how I know this, I've done it. It's the thing about learning something new. It's all a learning experience. It's kind of a sad learning experience when that happens. I'm going to go ahead and weave in all my ends and I'll meet you back here when we turn it inside or right side out. Now I bet you were thinking, there's no way no way that pillow cover is going to fit over a 20 inch pillow form, but it does. It fits very nicely, snugly. That's the way you want it. You want it nice and full. And see how that stitch that I used, you really can't see the pillow form through it. I've turned it right side out. And you want to get in there with your hands and tuck it Tuck it in all your corners. If you don't like how some of your seams turned out, go in and work on those, but they're probably just fine and dandy. It's gonna look like you have a little bit of a gap here, but you're gonna stretch it over, find your buttonhole row, and you're going to find where your buttons will meet up. Just make sure that they're lined up on the same row, whatever row you decide to put them on. And again, use a stitch marker or a different color piece of yarn to mark each one. When you sew your buttons on, because it is very hard to get the yarn through. Okay, give yourself a nice long piece of yarn so that you only have to thread this very small hole once. Now, to make it easier on myself, I'm going to split the yarn. See how it's kind of braided around? Okay, so if you split it, it makes it a lot thinner. Get one piece through. Get my next piece through. It's just a, so much easier. You can do it the other way. It's a struggle. Whoops. Well, I'm trying to do this while looking at the camera. I'm going to go thread these and I'll be right back. All right, I got them all through. Just make sure they're all going the same way. Okay. 
when you sew your buttonholes on. Let's see, I'm going to make mine line up right here. You don't have to actually sew into anything. You can sew around. Leave yourself a, kind of a long piece because you're going to be tying it together but then weaving these in. Here's what I meant by you can just go around. You can split through the stitch, like split through the yarn if you want to make it even more sturdy. I've left about that much. Because I want to be able to weave it in. If you weave it in, you don't have to worry about it falling off in the laundry. Just tie it very, very tightly a couple of times and then come back and weave in those ends right behind here. Put your other two buttons on. Just make sure that you line them up evenly and that whichever way your buttonhole's going, they are identical. All right, I'll meet you back here in just a minute. You're just about done. Okay, once your buttons are on, you're done. Congratulations, I hope you like the pattern. Let me know, please. If you do like it, please give me a like and uh, subscribe. Thanks a lot. <laughs>